Okay, so today I have a bunch of beauty products to review for you. Makeup, skincare, hair care. I was running around my house grabbing everything. I think I have like 25 products to talk about. And I used a lot of these products mainly like in the fall and the winter, and it is still so cold where I live. Winter weather is still going to be here for a while. In fact, we're just kind of starting to get into the winter weather. So if you are dealing with dry skin or dry hair, I have a lot of products that I think you'll enjoy that are really moisturizing and just good for this time of the year. And then some products that I don't recommend and buying. A good mix between drugstore and high end. And I've used these products up fully. So I'll let you know in today's video if I am going to repurchase them, if I've already repurchased them because they're that good, or if I don't think they're worth it and I won't spend my money on them again. So let's get started. I did use up two different concealers. They're both really hydrating formulas. So they're great for the winter time, or if that's the type of formula you tend to go for. The first one is the Catrice True Skin Concealer. I've repurchased this so many times throughout the years. It is a $6 concealer. It it is so good. It's very thin. It definitely has that serum-like texture, so it blends out in seconds. It doesn't feel or look heavy on the skin. It definitely has like a like a wet, dewy-looking finish, but I always set mine into place with powder, so it mattifies it, and it locks down, and it stays in place well. I will use this in the summertime, but typically I do love it a little bit more in the fall and the winter because it is so hydrating. It has really good coverage. It stays in place well. It's just, it's an amazing option. Like, it really does feel like a high-end concealer. So I will always repurchase this. The other one I used up is the Natasha Denona High Glam. I went through this a little bit faster than I did last time. In fact, I think I had this in my last empties video too, but this has become one of my favorites. I think it is like my number one favorite concealer. Tower 28 and Catrice come in very close to this, but I just, I use this in place of foundation a lot, like probably at least like four times a week. So that's probably why I went through it so quickly. I need to repurchase it. It looks really good. It is very creamy. I find it to be really hydrating, but I have heard from some people who have very dry skin say that they don't find it to be hydrating enough. So if that is the case for you, I do recommend the Catrice formula or the Tower 28 formula, but I think this looks really pretty on the skin. It has great coverage, but it looks skin-like. Like it doesn't look heavy or cakey. It doesn't enhance anything. I don't want it to enhance. It just, it looks really nice and wears really well throughout the day. So I haven't repurchased this yet, but I plan on it. And I'm still holding out hope that in 2024, we see a high glam foundation because I love the way this looks on the skin. A product that I do not plan on repurchasing is the Fenty Skin Melt Off Jelly Oil Makeup Melting Cleanser. I actually really like the formula of this product. That's my issue with a lot of Fenty Skin products. The formulas are so nice, like some of the top products I've tried, but a lot of the time the packaging makes it either hard to get the product out or it releases too much product and then you end up wasting product and going through it too quickly. That's what happens with this product. In the beginning, it's fine. Like you push this little button on top and the product comes out the bottom and you can usually get just enough to like remove all of your makeup. But then as you start going through the product and you tap the button, too much product comes out. And by the end, it was basically just like running out as soon as I opened the lid. I don't know if that's because the product itself just kind of changes and gets a little bit thinner the longer longer you have it or if the packaging actually is faulty, but I really can't justify a high-end skincare product if it's going to release too much product because I just, I end up wasting it. And it's not even like a moisturizer that you can apply to like your hands, your neck, your chest. It's actually like a makeup remover. So I only need a really small amount to remove my makeup. And then if there's any excess, like what do I do with it? It's sad because it's such a good product. I love the texture of this. It's not as thin as a cleansing oil or as thick as a cleansing balm. Like it is a true jelly oil type of product. So a little bit goes a long way. It spreads so easily on your face. It removes your makeup. It is really moisturizing. But like I said, I just can't justify wasting the product. So I won't repurchase it for that reason. So I did use up two micellar waters. I was probably more so using these like in the summer heading into fall, but it took me a while to get through them because I had two open at the same time. The waterproof one is my favorite, but my husband was at the drugstore and I asked him to pick me one up a while ago and he grabbed this one, which I do like this one too, just not as much. This one is the hyaluronic acid and aloe micellar cleansing water. Garnier makes my favorite formula for sure. The waterproof one removes 
all of your eye makeup without any effort. I just pour a little bit onto a washcloth and like gently press it on my eye and it takes all of my eye makeup off. This one is really nice for the skin because I do feel like after I use it, my skin feels really moisturized and very, very smooth. And the waterproof one does leave like a little bit of a film behind, which is not like the most ideal, but I do think this one is the most effective. And especially if you're like me and you do like to wear a lot of eye makeup, at least, you know, a few times a week, this is perfect because it doesn't take a lot of effort to remove it. So I love both of these, but I'm going to skip, I'm going to stick with the waterproof one. I forgot, I just used this up as well. This is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. It is my favorite cleansing balm. It's really affordable. I feel like a little bit goes a long way. It does do a great job of removing makeup, both like eye makeup and face makeup. It's not like too thick or too oily. It's not, I don't know if it's scented at all. I don't think it's actually scented. I was going to say it's not overly scented because some cleansing balms have such a strong fragrance and they really irritate my eyes. or They leave like a little bit of a film on my eyes after after I use them. That doesn't happen with this one. It is my go-to. So I probably will repurchase this for the winter time. And then once spring rolls around, I'll go back to just using the micellar water from Garnier. I used up one hair mask. It is the Bondi Boost Miracle Hair Mask. There's actually like a tiny little bit left in here, but I just thought I would include it in today's video so I didn't have to save it after I used it in a few days. This is a good hair mask, but it's not my absolute favorite. My top hair mask is the Coco and Eve Like a Virgin. That one is incredible incredibly nourishing, so hydrating. Like when I use that product, my hair, I can see and feel a difference for days. I did repurchase that one during Black Friday because it was on sale. And I'm just going to stick with that one for now. I did like this enough that I purchased a shampoo and conditioner from Bondi Boost over Black Friday as well but I just don't think it's quite as good as the Coco and Eve ones. So for me personally, I'd rather just stick with one that I know works so well. I will say this one's a little bit lighter. Like it doesn't feel as intense as the Coco and Eve one. So if that one's like a little bit too rich for you, you might prefer this because it doesn't weigh my hair down. It's not overly moisturizing, but when it comes to a hair mask, I want like the most intense hair mask out there. I don't care if it makes my hair look greasy because I'll just use it on a day where I don't want to style my hair or I'll wear it up in a bun and I'll just deal with the fact that it kind of weighs my hair down or it looks a little bit greasy because it is so nourishing rather than something that doesn't feel nourishing enough because otherwise I feel like there's no point to it. I wouldn't say the Bondi Boost one falls in that category. It's just not quite as rich or intense as Coco and Eve. I did finish up at the Huda Beauty Loose Powder. I used this up a while ago. I wanna say back in the fall. Again, it was probably like right before or right after I filmed my last empties video. It took me forever to get through this. And I was using this powder, not exclusively, but it was like my main go-to loose powder for like the spring and the summer. I love this. I actually did end up repurchasing it. Initially, I skipped it and I bought the pressed version and the pressed version was not good for me. It looked so cakey on the skin, really, really heavy. So I ended up repurchasing the loose version because I just missed having it. I will say I am currently using the One Size by Patrick Star and that one is really good too. I think the Huda Beauty one is a little bit... They're kind of different. Like the Patrick Star one is almost a little bit thicker, maybe slightly more mattifying, and the Huda Beauty one is a little bit lighter. It is really mattifying on the skin, and I wouldn't call it like a natural setting powder, but I don't know, they're both great. They're just, they're a little different in my mind. Like when I'm doing my makeup, I have in mind which one I want to use, like depending on what I'm going for, what the day is like, and it's hard to explain, but I do love this. It is such a good powder. It locks your makeup into place. I used it like all summer long, so I definitely wanted to have it back in my collection. If that powder sounds too intense for you and you want something really soft and light and natural, I do recommend the LIS Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I just used this one up. It's a really great option under the eyes because it doesn't add like any sort of heavy feel, whereas this one is a little bit thicker. This one is so light. I also like using this in combination with like cream cheek products because it lightly sets them into place without like completely mattifying them so you can get a little bit of a glow but it's just like a soft natural powder it's a really great option so I probably will repurchase this at some point I need to work my way through a few other powders first because I have a lot of powders that I've hit pan on but not fully finished so if you watch these videos throughout the year you'll see a lot of powder in them 
I don't know what happened. We just lost power. My camera flickered and I lost like 30 minutes of footage. I was almost done filming this video. So I'm going to go back through the products now that I already pretty much filmed it once. Hopefully the second time around, I'll be a little bit more concise with my thoughts because I do feel like I can be kind of long-winded with these videos. I did use up a sunscreen from Beauty Pie. So I actually have a lot of sunscreens that are currently open. I don't know what happened this summer. I think I was just trying out like a lot of formulas. I can never find them because I feel like, especially in the summer, I mean, it's important to wear sunscreen all year, but in the summer, I'm always bringing it like in my beach bag, in my purse, to the park. Like I always have them with me. So I need to work my way through a couple of of other ones before I purchase any additional sunscreens, but I did use up the Beauty Pie Ultra Light Daily SPF 30. This is a nice formula because it is incredibly light. It's not thick or heavy. It's also not overly glowy. So many sunscreens these days are incredibly glowy, which I kind of love because it does give your skin like that natural, healthy, dewy finish. But sometimes you don't want that, especially in the summertime. So this is a great option if you just want like a very lightweight, smoothing sunscreen. Again, I don't plan on repurchasing it right now because I don't need to purchase repurchase any sunscreen, but I think at some point I would go back to this because it wears well under makeup and it's also great on its own. I actually need to place an order on the Beauty Pie website because I want to repurchase this product. And then I have a list on my phone of like two or three other things I want to try. I haven't placed a Beauty Pie order in a little while, but I've been meaning to repurchase like my favorite lip oil from them, which I might have featured in my last empties video, but this product is so good. It's their Super Healthy Skin Deluxe Body Moisture Cream. This feels so luxurious. Like I, I've never tried a body cream or body butter that feels as luxurious as this one. I feel like that's the best way to describe it. It has such an interesting texture compared to a lot of other body creams I've tried. It almost feels cooling on the skin. It definitely has like this wet feel to it. And if you apply it on your skin in the morning, like at night when you're going to bed, you can still feel it on there. So it's not something that really sinks in fully, in my opinion. Like it almost has a little bit of not a wet feel, but like you can feel it on the skin, which doesn't sound super appealing, but if you have dry skin and you want like that all day moisture, this product is so perfect for that. It has a really nice, fresh, almost citrusy scent to it. So I feel like it's perfect in the morning because it kind of wakes you up, but it does make your skin look really healthy. There's like a little bit of a glow. I don't know if I would call it like full on shimmer, but your skin just looks amazing. It feels amazing, very soft, very moisturized all day long. So I do want to pick this up again because I think the formula is so good. But again, I just, I've been waiting to place a beauty pie order because I have a little bit of a running list. So if you have any other recommendations for beauty pie, let me know. I haven't placed an order in a little while, but I do like a lot of their products. Another moisturizer that I really love for the face is from Tower 28. So I don't know why, but I, I wasn't really interested in trying this product for a little while. I think it's because when I think of Tower 28, I think of makeup. And when brands do makeup and skincare, for some reason, like my brain just like focuses on one aspect of what they do, either makeup or skincare. So for Tower 28, I always just think of them as a makeup brand. But I know a lot of their products are supposed to be really gentle on the skin. Like they always say they are accepted by the National Eczema Association, and I do deal with eczema. So I figured I would just try this out. There was a time period back in the fall where my skin just freaked out. It does this every few months. I don't know if it's because like it's just reacting to a new product I tried or it's like the weather change or whatever. I feel like a lot of things can kind of cause it, but my neck was super red, really, really irritated. And there are other products I like that can kind of help with that. But the reason I decided to try this one is because it specifically says is a safety net for your skin. It's a super hydrating, gentle moisturizer that helps reset skin back to its baseline. And I feel like sometimes that's just what my skin needs. Like for whatever reason, something just throws it off and I cannot get it back to like its normal, regular calm state. And like I said, there are other products I like. Skin Fix has some really great gentle products. First Aid Beauty, I like their Ultra Repair Cream, but this was just the one I had on hand and it did a really good job. Like after a few days, my skin was like less inflamed, less red, less irritated. So I just continued to use it. It's very gentle but really rich, very, very moisturizing. So if you have very sensitive skin and you also like more of a rich, intense moisturizer, I think you'll like this. I also used up two of the Tower 28 Make Waves mascaras. I feel like I go through this fast. And at first when I was saying that, I thought it was just because I use the mascara so much and I pretty much wear it every day and then I'll build it up because it does layer really well. But I do feel like I go through this a little bit 
faster than I do other formulas. Do you find that to be the case for you too? Like, does it dry out fast for you? I've repurchased this product so many times and I feel like if I look back on last year, I went through it more quickly than I probably should have because usually mascaras last a little bit longer. But it's such a good mascara. It makes my lashes look voluminous and long. It layers so well. It lifts and curls them. I currently have the brown version open or like the black brown version and I'm really enjoying that one. But I just, I feel like I have to have it on hand. Even though there are a lot of other mascaras I really enjoy. Like today I used the Flower Beauty one. Although I have fake lashes on today, so that doesn't really count. But there are other formulas I really enjoy. This is one that I feel like I have to have on hand because it is so good. So when I want my lashes to look extra good, this is the one that I reach for. So I will definitely continue to repurchase it. I actually have something that I did not use up. So when it comes to empties videos, I feel like... Not that they're misleading, but most of the products in an empties video are going to be products that I like enough to use up fully and then possibly repurchase. I don't really feature a lot of products that I hate because if they're that bad, I probably won't finish them up. These products are products that I really don't like, but I feel like I could use them up if I wanted to. I might pass them along to my mom or my sister to see if they like this formula, but I don't know. It just didn't work for me. So it's from Ava NYC. It is the Lift Off Volume Shampoo and Conditioner. I love the Main Magic Shampoo and Conditioner. That is one of my favorite formulas and I ran out of it. So I actually went to an Ulta store to repurchase it because I was like completely out of shampoo and conditioner as a whole. Usually I have a few formulas open at the same time that I'm kind of using interchangeably, but I used them all up and they didn't have that one in store. So I grabbed this one, just thinking I would try something different and I don't like it. First of all, I don't find that it really makes my hair look really voluminous at all. In fact, it almost weighs it down, but on top of that, it really dries my hair out. And the reason why I love the Main Magic formula is because it is very moisturizing, super smoothing, so it cuts down on frizz, it makes my hair look shiny, and it's just a very conditioning formula. This was a very drying formula. It also made my hair kind of tangly and hard to comb through, and I just, I don't want to use it up, so I probably won't. I hate for it to go to waste, so again, I'll see if my mom likes it or my sister they might enjoy it, but I wouldn't recommend trying this one. Okay, the Vegamore Grow Dry Shampoo. So I got this in a FabFitFun box and then I repurchased it during the Sephora sale. It's a pretty expensive dry shampoo, so it's not something that I would typically pay full price for. The reason why this is a little bit more expensive is because this brand, like all of their products focus on thinning hair and making it, I don't know if they actually claim that their products make your hair thicker, but they say they word it in like a very specific way. They help support thicker, fuller looking strands for people with thinning hair. I know they have like a serum. They also have other hair products that might be really effective. I wouldn't say my hair is completely thinning, but it's definitely thinner than it used to be. And I really notice it like along my part or if my hair is like up in a bun. Like my husband took a picture of me and my toddler the other day and I felt like my hair looked really thin on the sides. So again, not thin. Like I wouldn't say I have thin hair. It's just, it's not as thick as it used to be. So I figured something like this couldn't hurt. And the first time I tried it, I just liked the actual dry shampoo formula. It does a great job of leaving my hair looking clean, looking fresh. It does have a strong fruity scent, but I kind of like it. I feel like it smells good. So I bought it because it was on sale. I just feel like it's too expensive. Like this probably isn't effective enough on its own to actually make my hair look or feel thicker. I'm just not convinced there are any long-term benefits with the dry shampoo. Again, I think they have a serum and maybe that works really well. Like I wouldn't be opposed to trying some of their other products. I just, I feel like this is too expensive to continuously repurchase when there are other dry shampoos I like. I did use up this hairspray from Verb. This is something that actually makes my hair look a little bit thicker, more voluminous. It is their Holden Volume Strong Hairspray. If you have very thin hair and you aren't really you aren't really worried about like locking in a curl, you just more so want like a voluminous look, this is a really nice option. I didn't use this product today. I, it's probably what I would have used today if I didn't run out of it. I use the Kenra Volume Spray and I usually switch back and forth. The Kenra one does have like a longer hold. So if I'm doing tight Tighter curls or I want my curls to really stay in place that's what I'll use that one for but today I just like ran a really large barreled curling iron kind of through the ends 
And there was a little bit more curl a few hours ago, but I probably would have used this hairspray because it would have given me like that thicker, fuller look. And I didn't really care as much about like a tight curl today. So I do think this is a really nice formula unless you're really trying to lock your hairstyle in place all day. Because if I curl my hair and then spray this product in my hair, the curls will fall out pretty quickly, but I feel like it does still give long lasting volume. I did use up two of the NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Gels. Again, I think I might've had these open at the same time because I don't normally go through this so fast. Like one bottle of this will usually last me a while, but I was using them again, I guess interchangeably. I don't know how, why I had two open. It doesn't matter. I used them both up. I love this formula. It's really, really good. I'm not currently using it right now. I'm using the Glossier Boy Brow because I also have that open. So instead of running out to repurchase this, I thought I would just stick with Glossier. But this really is my favorite. It does such a good job of locking your brows into place. It makes them look thick and full and voluminous. And I love it. I've gone through so many of these. The last makeup product I used up, or I almost used up, I have like a tiny bit left, is the Milk Makeup Setting Spray. Did I mention this in my last empties video? I feel like maybe I did, but I don't think so because it was in like my empties bin. And usually after I film the video, I'll just, I'll recycle the products right afterwards. So I don't think I did. I've only gone through two of these, like two full bottles ever. So and I think it's a really good product. It does last a long time. I think the reason why I feel like I mentioned it is because I did repurchase a new bottle of this during the last Sephora sale. It is such a good product, especially for the fall and the winter because it is very, very hydrating. It does give you a really glowy finish. So honestly, I like to use it as a priming spray, but if you like a glowy setting spray, this is perfect because even though you are left with a glow, it does still lock your makeup into place really well. Whereas other glowy setting sprays sometimes break my makeup apart part. That is not the case with this one. I love this product so much. So I do recommend trying this. Right now my favorite setting spray is the LYS one. That one is mattifying, but it's very natural at the same time. So if you're looking for more of a matte option with like the most perfect fine mist, the LYS one is great, but this one's very hydrating. Okay, I did use up the Drunk Elephant Sea Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream. I didn't purchase this I feel like maybe I got it in a set a while ago and then I had it open for way too long because I didn't like it on, or I didn't like it as an eye cream. It kind of irritated my skin a little bit. I didn't think the formula was moisturizing enough for an eye cream and I wasn't seeing a big difference in like the actual brightening of my under eyes, which is what it claims to do. To be fair, I don't have super dark under eyes. I do say that from time to time, but I feel like that's important to point out if I'm talking about a product that either brightens or doesn't brighten my under eyes. So anyway, I stopped using it as an actual eye cream, but I still wanted to finish it up. So I was using it on the back of my hands. And again, I didn't see a big difference in like the actual brightening of the skin, but it's a little bit more comfortable than an actual vitamin C serum. So I just figured I would use it out fully. Drunk Elephant, I don't know. I know they're having like a big moment right now because all the young kids are loving Drunk Elephant, which is absolutely wild to me. I love that young kids are taking an interest in having like a good skincare routine and they want to take care of their skin. I think it's never too young to start, but I've seen articles. I've seen like TikTok story times about how they're trying to purchase like retinol and products that are really not meant for their young, smooth baby skin. So I don't know. I just feel like 10 year olds buying drunk elephant. That does not make sense to me. I know they have some products that could work for young kids, but there are just so many other brands out there. A lot of affordable brands, not that young kids have to stick with like really inexpensive skincare, but why not? Even as a grown adult, like there are a ton of affordable skincare products I really love too. Although it is fun to splurge on certain things. So I guess I get it. But at the same time, I'm like 10 years old. Like that is so young. Your skin is so perfect and healthy. You don't need to spend a ton of money. Okay. One high-end product I do repurchase is this one. Although I usually get this for 50% off. I can't remember the last time I paid, I paid full price for it. It is the It Cosmetics Confidence in an Eye Cream. It is my favorite eye cream. I know, I know people say you don't need a separate eye cream, but I swear by this product. It is so moisturizing, so smoothing, nothing, nothing does it for me like this product when it comes to my under eyes. Other products just dry my skin out or they irritate my eyes or they irritate my skin. And I just feel like every time I switch it up and try something else, I always come back to this. Although I did really like the Osea one. I still have that open. I was kind of using them interchangeably. I feel like they're very, very similar, but because I can get this for 50% off on like 
Black Friday or 21 Days of Beauty, like I always have this on hand because I always grab it while it's on sale because it is something I go through every few months. So I love this product so, so much. The last skincare product that I used up is the Community 66 Detoxifying Gel Cleanser. This was definitely getting old. I've had this for a really long time and I feel like it just kind of got like lost in the shuffle of my other products. And I was kind of like decluttering and going through skincare and hair care and I had this one and I was like, I it's still good, I can use it up fully. This is a really nice gel cleanser. If you have oily skin or acne prone skin or you like a gel cleanser, but some of them are a little bit too thin for you, this is a nice option because it's a little bit thicker. I don't plan on repurchasing this right now because it is winter. I definitely prefer something a little more hydrating. Right now I'm using the Fenty cleanser, which I said I wasn't going to repurchase because of the packaging, but I love the formula so much. So once I got it, I literally just like squeezed it into a different bottle, like a two travel bottles. And that has been so much more enjoyable because if you tried the Fenty cleanser, like you have to squeeze that bottle so hard to get the cleanser out, especially once you get to the bottom. Anyway, I just, I'm not really into gel cleanser during the winter time, but I wouldn't be opposed to using it again in the summer. I did use up the Amica Dream Routine Overnight Hydration Treatment. I did repurchase this. I actually got two bottles of it at the same time. They were having a sale. One of you let me know. I think it was like a 50% off sale, their hair masks. And because this is an over overnight treatment, it is considered a hair mask, so I did grab two of them. I don't use it as a hair mask. I actually use it after I wash my hair, and then I'll just like run it through my hair before I either air dry my hair or blow dry it, and it is very hydrating, very smoothing. I think this is the third bottle that I've gone through. I really do like this product. It's not heavy, and it doesn't weigh my hair down. It just like lightly moisturizes my hair, and I feel like it's a good leave-in treatment. So I do love this. I will continue to use it. Last thing I finished up the Haas Coconut Oil Nourishing Shampoo and Conditioner. I love these so, so much. I do want to try these again. I feel like maybe I have them on hand. I remember picking them up or ordering them when they were on sale. I just haven't been using them because I've been switching it up. But I love these formulas for like day to day because they are very light. I do find that it is like a hydrating formula. I keep saying formulas. I feel like they, they just, I see them as one in my mind. They're very hydrating. They are smoothing, but they're not as intense as the Ava NYC main magic formula. That can sometimes be a little bit too much if you do have thin hair or your hair gets greasy easily. I could see why you might not love that. If that's the case, but you still want a hydrating formula, I recommend these. And these are affordable. They're like, I want to say $6 each. This brand goes on sale at Ulta all the time. I definitely recommend them. Okay, so that's all I wanted to share with you in today's video. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll link a couple of other recent videos for you on the screen if you want some more options, but I will see you very soon with a new one. Bye.